from October 1979 to October 1980, Marshal Eddie Conway helped organize a prison educational outreach program called To Say Their Own Words, where prisoners and radicals met inside the Maryland Penitentiary to discuss fascism, capitalism, the prison system, and many other issues that have become even more pressing today. To say their own words epitomize the genius that is Eddie Conway. I say this because the impact of the program are still being seen. Before to say their own words, the Merlin Penitentiary was known for being a brutal environment. The literacy rate of the prison population was very low. Either a prisoner could not read at all or could only read at a sixth grade level. No library existed, the education department was in shambles, and the prison was overcrowded. Just eight years prior to the start of To Say Their Own Words, prisoners at the Maryland Penitentiary rioted for better living conditions. Eddie, in his genius, saw the potential in us. Even in the face of all the blight, Eddie worked in partnership with Brenda Vogel, a librarian with the Maryland Department of Education, to create a library system inside the prison that included meaningful programs for prisoners. You'll witness these men changing by participating in to say their own words. In the time following the 50-week program, the Maryland Penitentiary prison population became more literate. Prisoners were going to school and graduating from college. Some of the participants had passed on, but the ones that are still alive are doing remarkable things within the community. They are living their own words. To say your own words, that was a program created in 1980 in the Maryland State Penitentiary. And with the brainchild, Eddie Conway, and I found it to be uh, one of the most important things in my life. These brothers, you know, and this is on a serious tip. Without these brothers here, this program would not be functioning. We decided to develop a larger university style uh, people's program in the prison that would help educate prisoners that weren't necessarily involved in the local politics, but would bring them abreast of what was going on locally, nationally, and internationally. So we put in for a grant. We got that grant. We used the library as our base. And we got an auditorium. And we operated the program to bring the prison and the community closer together. Eddie put me on the first steps of PE, political education. And the truth be told, really, Eddie politicized me. The 13th Amendment, the one that says that Slavery don't exist in America except in prisons, you know. And of course, we know that we're not slaves. We don't have any desire to be slaves. So we are contributing some of our time and our energy to look into this, to do some research on it, and find out whether or not we can't persuade some people that that amendment should be amended. Since at least 64, some of the leading ideas in our society, in theory, in our society, have been coming right out of the prisons. I'd just like to say that the night was very educational. Thank you. And every night that I've been here has been very educational. And I don't think anyone could come here without learning something. I think we, we had two things in mind. Uh, one was um, to uh, have a university level program for the average prisoner, uh, and two, to recognize the amount of intellect and talent and, and uh, the ability to analyze things among the prison population uh, by allowing them to say their own words. And it gave you a incentive to stand up that you didn't have to be eloquent, you had to be no great orator, but just know that you had a right to express yourself and your opinion really mattered. The answer is that we got to do something. Like five years ago, I said, yeah, let's burn this motherfucker down. No questions asked. But it's different now. I know we can come together collectively. You got to find the willful thought in yourself 
to speak up. And you'll be more comfortable in speaking up if you understand your subject matter. Develop your own narrative. That's the key. And I'm interested to know what you think that uh, black folks in particular should be doing in terms of making those uh, alliances with the folks that suffer the same thing that not necessarily necessarily suffering because they're black, but because they're just poor. You know, the Chicanos, Native Americans, the poor hillbillies up there in Appalachian or wherever. People were always surprised and impressed when they came into smaller gatherings of prisoners and had discussions about all kinds of things. And they would leave saying, damn, I didn't expect to find that in the prison, or I didn't expect they would be like that. Uh, and they were always surprised. And the reason they were surprised was because they did not get a full picture of what prisoners were thinking about, talking about, and doing at that time. This is to say your own words, and you are to view, you know, and express yourself the way you see it. Even before the project uh, Speak Up, Say Your Own Words, I met Eddie. It's in the 70s, around 71. I was in the Maryland Penitentiary. A young guy just got in prison I didn't even have a mustache. You know, being a young guy coming into prison, especially the Maryland Penitentiary, you don't befriend guys you don't even know. That's a no-no. But Eddie was the kind of guy who was out there, you could see that he was some type of leader because he was always giving directions. And for the most part, if he was uh, talking to a group or was involved with a group, he'd be the one talking. Everybody else kind of be listening. That, I guess, kind of got me curious about this guy that people was listening to in a penitentiary. And of course, he had a little bush on, so I thought that to be a little bit militant-like. And so I kind of slide over to him now and then, I eavesdrop a little bit, come to find out that he was responsible for teaching young guys the best routes to take while you're in prison. And I could see then that he was a, truly a good leader. Uh, his specialty is organizing. And he was one of the first guys I've seen, as far as leaders go, that didn't necessarily have to be out front. Don't let the ideas and the concepts of this program stagnate. You can use it with three people, you can use it with five people, you can take it back and teach your whole family, you can teach kids, you can teach each other, and everybody will learn. Now I'm gonna call the next speaker up here because I'm finished. By organizing this program, we allow people from the community to to see, pers have personal experience, but we allowed the prisoners to understand that they had power in their own words itself, and that went toward changing them and went toward making them want to change society. And that was the ultimate aim, is to get them involved in their community to improve the conditions of the greater community. I'm one who believes that uh, guys like myself, we've been around now, and we know what we want to get done, and we're doing it, but we have to be able to pass this on to the younger generation. And if we're not connected with them, then some of our stuff is going to get lost. So I think we need to get it where we can connect with other people as well. So that's why I always mention the, the, the centers, the youth centers, uh, the libraries, uh, definitely them middle schools. I mean, you'd be surprised what that would do for uh, a kid's uh, ego, uh, his courage. Uh, his anticipation of exceeding just to know that somebody take interest and put these kind of skill sets in his hands, you know. So I think that's, that's what I would look forward to. No, I, I just want to thank everybody who helped make this possible. Give me another opportunity to say my own words. And with that, I'm going to say that's a wrap. Thank you so much for watching The Real News Network, where we lift up the voices, stories, and struggles that you care about most. And we need your help to keep doing this work. So please, tap your screen now, subscribe, and donate to The Real News Network. Solidarity forever.